Good morning, everyone. My name is Partha. I'm here on behalf of Atavet today. I'm a mechanical engineering student from Rama Institute of Technology. I've been a machine design intern at Atavet for the past three months now. So I'll be presenting you uh, in this session today. So around two weeks ago, we held our first session. Uh, so we had basics of machine design and then uh, you know different softwares that we have in uh, machine design that are available in the market today. And then we had uh, a little bit brush up of SolidWorks and visualize as well. So if you missed that, you need not worry about that. In the email invites that we have sent you, there's a link to access the previous session as well. So at the end of the session, we'll also put up that link as well. And you can access the previous session if you have missed out on it. OK, so we'll begin today's session. So today we'll be covering up some of the most basic elemental stuff of SolidWorks. You know, even if you have worked with other softwares, machine design softwares, You'll already be knowing some of these tools, but even if you don't know them, we have you know set up in such a way that even a beginner should be knowing, should understand whatever I'm saying today. Okay, and then uh, we'll start. Okay, so in this session, we'll learn how to start a sketch on a face or plane, create sketch entities, and then use smart dimension, apply sketch features and relations, and then use extrudes and revolves. Okay, so these are some of the topics that I've. Uh, I will be covering for you today. So this is the home view of SolidWorks when you turn it on. Okay. So to start drawing, to start sketching, or to create a model, what you have to do is in the top in the top tools that we have, we have a new uh, option that is there. When you click on it, it asks part assembly or drawing. Even if you're just sketching, you'll have to click on the part. You'll have to either double click it or just click it once and click OK over here. A new window will open. Okay. So here we are. This is the sketch uh, interface. You can notice in the bottom right corner that editing part is active, which means that you can now start sketching or edit parts when you've already created them. Okay. You can also notice that there's an MMGS option. MMGS is millimeter grams and seconds. This is one of the most commonly used uh, dimensions. If you're comfortable with centimeters, meters, or inches, you can always switch them before starting sketching or adding any features. Now, first up, we'll go how to start a sketch. Sketching is like the basic art of SolidWorks. You should be knowing sketching if you have to do anything else. So how do you sketch? Similar to how you're going to write on a book, you write on a page. So that is similar in SolidWorks as well. You need something to write on, to sketch on. So similarly, we have three default planes that SolidWorks gives us, which are the front plane, the top plane, and the right plane. These are the three default planes that SolidWorks has. Now, are these three the only planes that you can sketch on? No, that is not true. When you go to the features section here, you have something called reference geometry over here that's that's plain i'm not going to go deep into that but now what you should be knowing is these you can create new planes and then start sketching over there if these three are not sufficient for you now if i hold the control key you can notice that there are three default planes that are provided by solidworks these are the three planes that you can sketch on now how to start a sketch how do you start a sketch you click on sketch okay i'll hit escape first okay you click on sketch in the top left corner now it is you will be prompted to choose any one sketch. Now front plane, top plane, and the right plane. We have three planes here. Now you can also choose in another way. We have in the, the uh, tree over here in the left. You can click on that. You know you notice that the option comes called sketch. Or you can also right click on it. The same feature will come up again. Now if you click on sketch, you notice that it starts sketching. Now I'll exit from the sketch before I go into sketching. I have to tell you one point. Now as I told earlier. You know, the three planes are not the only places where you can actually sketch. So now you can also sketch on flat surfaces of other models that you have created. Now I have one simple model that I've already created. Okay, I'll be opening that. This is just a solid cylinder, solid cylinder, nothing else. Okay, that I've created. Now what? Where is the top plane? If you click on that, you notice that the top plane is at the bottom now. Now what you'll have to do? If you sketch on the top plane, you'll be sketching on the bottom surface of the cylinder. You notice that I'll move it. How do you do this? Is you hold your scroll scroll key in the mouse and you can rotate around. Okay. Now, if you start sketching on the top plane, you'll be actually sketching on the bottom surface of the cylinder. But what you want to do, if you want to sketch on the top plane, what do you do now? You the same thing again. What I told is use the sketch thing, sketch tool, and then you can choose this plane. Or even if you click X mark over here, you can right click on this face. And then again, we have the sketch tool where well, one and the same. You will go and start sketching. All these tools are essentially, essentially the same. Okay. So there's one more thing called view orientation. 
okay the this box small tiny box that is the weave orientation you can know that so we have various weaves in cad front weave top weave back weave okay uh, and isometric weave right weave you know all these are some basic weaves in cad in general okay so how do you access that when you click on the weave orientation tools here we have a flyout menu we have various tools you notice that the top weave this is the left weave front weave right weave whenever you click on that and isometric view as well if you click on isometric it comes to isometric view we also have this in the top uh, bottom left corner we have this axis three axis that are given if you click on the x axis you notice that it comes to right view now since this is a cylinder you won't notice much difference in right and front views but it will change okay similarly if you click on the z axis notice that it comes to the front view and similarly if you click on the y you now go to the top view so this is some uh, quick access to use that. But if you need some other waves such as isometric, you can go here and you can click isometric or use control seven as a keyboard shortcut as well. Okay. Now that is one thing. Now there is also another view called normal two. What is normal two? If you choose one plane, now if I start sketching on this plane, you notice that it is not normal to that plane. What you have to do is now, so now that you've selected the plane, you can choose normal too and notice that you will now be normal and you can sketch easily sketching normally is act sketching normally to the plane is very easy and compared to sketching in some other views like this creating circles or lines in this this manner will be quite difficult now we'll go back to that itself uh, the previous we had open window so here i'll sketch in the front plane how do you access that again you right click on it or sketch it okay now i'm in the front plane and it is normal to the front plane Okay, now we'll be discussing some of the basic sketch entities that we have in SOLIDWORKS. Okay, so first one is line. You know, line is a very basic tool that is used in SOLIDWORKS or any other CAD software for that matter. Maybe we can create horizontal lines, vertical lines, lines at an angle, anywhere you want, however you want. And notice that when I finish this line to, with this point, a oh, blue color appears inside. This indicates that the close, the figure is closed. Okay that this figure is closed and it is not open now in the line section we also have another called center line center line you might already know we, we use it only for reference purposes or construction purposes as we tell okay so this will not be used to make any features i'll come up but features at the end of this module you'll be noting what are features some of the basic features this center line will not be used i'll also give a tiny example now so i've created this center line if you hit escape you notice that this line has been created now you already have the solid line. How do you convert this to a center line? You can delete this and insert later. Instead of that, we have an option in the left options. You see that for construction. If you click on that, you notice that it also becomes construction line. Now you notice that the blue color is gone, which indicates that it is now an open figure. And now this proves the fact that it cannot be used for features, creating 3D models. Okay. Because central lines, you cannot use them to create as boundaries. Okay. If you wanted to convert it back, you can always click it and uncheck this box. You notice that the blue color is back and it is a closed figure now. Okay. And in the lines, we have the third option called midpoint line. Midpoint line, as you as the name says, you click on some point that will be the midpoint of your line. And as you move away from it, you notice that the uh, uh, value is being shown in a blue box, in a white box in blue color now. Now, if you click on 50 and hit enter, you notice that the whatever 50 I entered, that was the halfway distance. Now, how do you check it? Now we have a tool called Smart Dimension in the Sketch Tools. Okay, Smart Dimension under that flyout we all uh, have several uh, you know tools again horizontal, vertical, baseline, chain. There are several dimensions. You need not go you know select accordingly. Just select Smart Dimension, and that will be smart enough you know to select the dimension that you click accordingly. Now you notice that it has created a 99 close to 100 mm. Now when you click on that line, this pop-up menu appears as default. Now you can enter the value manually. Okay, I entered 100. Notice any changes didn't occur. Okay, if I enter a higher value as well, no changes occurred. Until I hit enter, it won't change. But we have this flywheel on the bottom. Notice that now there are changes that happen in real time. Yeah, you also have this thumb wheel in the right, some small arrow marks. You can use that as well to you know change values. Uh, if I hit 100, you can notice that it's going to be 100 mm midpoint line. This is the midpoint of the line. Similarly, as I told, smart dimension, not just for the length of line. If you click on one line, then you click on the other. You notice that now angular dimension is being displayed. OK, uh, again, you'll be asked to prompt whether it is distance or angles. You'll be asked to prompt a value, certain value. Again, if you hit 120 and click OK, that value will get fixed. And if you click OK, you notice that 120 degrees has been applied to those two lines. 
Now, as I told, central lines are not used to create features. That doesn't mean you cannot apply dimensions to them. Now, you can check the angle between this and this. You can always vary them accordingly to your wishes. If I hit 45, you notice that changes occur accordingly. OK? So smart central lines, except the, for, for the fact that you cannot use for features, you can pretty much use them everywhere else. That is one point. So these are about lines, some basic stuff about lines. OK? I'm going to select all this and hit delete on my keyboard. This is the origin. Okay, origin and two axes that is created for your reference. It also shows that you have, you have started sketching. The sketch tool is active. Okay, the next one is rectangles. Now, SolidWorks provides you some variety of rectangles. We have four, four and one parallelogram. So, first one is corner rectangle. What is a corner rectangle? As the name says, one corner and the other corner. Or well, one corner here, I'll place it over here. And diagonally to the opposite corner, you select another endpoint. Now, if you select it over here, so yeah, uh, if you didn't notice, I'll undo this over here and select the corner rectangle again. You notice that there are two values active now. Now, there is 17.18 that is active. If you change it to 25 and click OK, that will be fixed. And the next one, you can vary accordingly. However, you, if you hit 50 and hit OK, you can notice that has been created. OK, even if you have, uh, don't think that it has been fixed, we cannot change it at all. You can always use smart dimension. You can use this. This was 25 earlier. Now you can make it 30 if you wish. Notice that it got increased and it is now 30 mm breadth length. Okay. The next type of rectangle we have is a center rectangle. Center rectangle, as the name says, first you choose the center of this rectangle and then you choose one corner. Okay. Now I chose the center over there and I'll choose some corner over here. Okay. If you hit escape, you notice that this is created now. The center lines have been created automatically to specify the position of the center of the rectangle. Okay. Now, next step we have is a three-point corner rectangle. Three-point corner. You first you select one corner, then you select the other corner, and then the next corner. Three consecutive corners that you'll choose to create this type of rectangle. Okay. Anytime you want to change the value, change the length and breadth, you can always use smart dimension. It is never fixed. You can always vary that. Okay. And the next type we have is a three-point center rectangle. What is the three point? First you choose the center, then you choose the midpoint of the edge and then you choose the corner and this is how a three point center rectangle is created okay you can also again notice that there is a center point that has been created with reference to two center lines now the fourth last type is a parallelogram parallelogram similar to three point rectangle you choose one point the next and the next but this is, will be an angle since it is a parallelogram okay now you might notice that there are a lot of small green boxes that have been created okay uh, in this case, you notice that there is a parallel symbol with the number 16 written on it. You notice these two lines turned into pink, which notices that that relation is between these two. These green boxes are called sketch relations. Okay. Now, these two lines are parallel. We know that in parallelogram, two opposite sides are always parallel to each other. Now, these two sides and these two sides are parallel. That is why they have this constraint. Okay. And here you might notice there is one vertical uh, sketch relation that has been given to this side. Okay, it is very important to maintain sketch relations. So if you have something in your mind, you, you want that only to be reflected on SOLIDWORKS. If you don't use sketch relations, you might find you might you might get it, it's not happening in that particular way. If I hold this corner in my mouse and you know drag it wherever I want, it still remains a parallelogram. Okay, even if I choose some other point, you will notice that it's still a parallelogram no matter how hard you try to move it. But if I create a small parallelogram, close to parallelogram I'll create. Okay, we're using just four lines. Okay, now this is not exactly a parallelogram, but if you try to move this now without sketch relations, it moves abruptly without any sense. Okay, but if you want to make this a parallelogram, how do you do it? You choose this one line, then you hold your control key on the keyboard, you hold, you click on the next line. Then we have the parallel constraint over here. If you click, there are various relations that you can add to these two lines now. But if you click on parallel now, you notice that these two are parallel now. Okay. So this is how we had certain constraints. Even if I create two random lines, okay, I'll give an example for you. Okay, I'll create, I'll choose the line again. How do you make these two perpendicular to each other? Click on one, hold your control key, click on the other. And now we have various relations that you can again add horizontal, vertical, collinear. Everything the name itself explains you. Perpendicular we have. Now the line moved somewhere over else. So if you try and bring it back here, you notice that these two lines are still perpendicular to each other. Okay. You notice that they are perpendicular. How do you check that? You can always check that using smart dimension.
click on the two lines and you notice that it is 90 degrees okay now it is showing that since i've already given the perpendicular relation it is not necessary so if you don't want it just uncheck it okay so this is about something about rectangles okay i'm gonna select all this and i'm gonna hit delete okay okay before that uh i'll create one rectangle again i'll create a rectangle randomly okay now smart dimension as i told you not just distances you can also use distance between two points if you click on this point and the next point here you notice that now it is showing the vertical distance between these two points now it is showing the horizontal distance and now it is showing the actual length of the line now depending on where you move your mouse this gets changing now if you want to lock it there's a right click option that the mouse is showing over there and you can always lock it lock the dimension that is being shown on the screen so this is one more use of using smart dimension okay select this and hit delete okay okay next up we have circles circles there are two types of circles again center circle and perimeter circle center circle first you choose the center of the circle in this case i'm going to choose it to be in the origin and then you're going to choose somewhere on the circumference of the circle. Now, note that the diameter dimension tool is active automatically. If you hit 100 and click OK, a circle of diameter 100 mm will be created. If you want to cross check that, use smart dimension again. Give dimensions to it, dimensions to it. And again, a pop-up menu will come. I want it to be at 100. Click OK. And 100 mm dimension will be given to the circle. Next up, we have three uh, perimeter circles. Okay, Perimeter circle, you can use two points or three points on the perimeter or circumference of the circle and then create a circle first up i'll show you how to create using only two points one and then the next if you click again i only use two points to create a circle and now i'll choose the same perimeter circle i'll choose one point over there one here and i'll move it i'll move the cursor up and down you notice that i'm not i'll be prompted to choose a third point and now a three point perimeter circle has been created if you have two lines if you want, want to create a circle between those two lines perimeter circle will be a useful tool to use that now we have several points that we can use circles start a circle on now if i choose center circle and if i create concentric circle you know what i mean by concentric two circles having centers at the same point if i create a concentric circle that relation will be added automatically when you started when you chose the first point now you try to move this both the circles move as if they are one, right? So that is one calculation that was added automatically when you chose the circle on the center of the previous circle, okay? So this is about circles, okay? I'm gonna select all this, hit delete on my key. Next up, we have arcs. Arcs, again, there are some three types of arc. Ta center point arc. You first choose the center of the arc. Then we are supposed to choose two end points of the arc. That was one, and this will be first or the second. Now, the dimension that is being uh, shown over there is the swept angle of the arc. So, that, now currently it is at 80 degrees. If you increase it to 100 and hit OK, you notice that a 100 degree swept angle arc was created. Okay. Now, the second type of arc is a tangent arc. Uh, before that, I'll create a small line for explaining your tangent arc. Okay. Now, I'll choose the second type, which is a tangent arc. What is a tangent arc? Is? You will have to choose only two points to create a tangent arc. One and then two, okay? What, what is the significance is, this first point where you chose the tangent arc, a tangent relation will be automatically added, okay? You notice that between these two arcs, a tangent relation was added. To explain it more correctly, I'm gonna create it on a line. I'll choose the first point to be here, and the second point to be here. A tangent relation was added automatically. No matter how hard you try to move this line, whatever you do, that tangent relation will maintain at all times, okay? So that is the uh, uh, one feature of tangent arc. The third one, we have three point arc, as the name says, you choose three points, okay? So you choose the first point, you choose the second, and then you're uh, prompt to choose the angle, swept angle as, as being shown there. Uh, you click there, a three point arc will be created. So this is, uh, you know, if you have two points or somewhere and you want to create an arc in between, three point arc will be useful, very much useful there, okay? So I'm going to select all this, hit delete. Okay, next up we have uh, ellipses. Ellipses, we have two types again, sorry. We have a uh, complete ellipse and a partial ellipse. I'm gonna show you what a complete ellipse is first. We all know what an ellipse is. You first choose the major axis and then the minor axis. You know, I'm gonna click on the origin first. Then I'll be choosing the major axis. You, you notice that it's a circle, but don't worry, you'll be only choosing the major axis first. Now that you've created, you can now choose the minor axis. You cannot enter the values just right now. 
just click over the uh, according to your reference and you can access the major access and minor access values over here okay uh, even if you not just come out of this how do you access it again just click on the abscess uh, click on the ellipse and you'll notice that it is all active again various parameters that you can always edit you need not worry about that similarly we have a partial ellipse similarly you'll be choosing the first point you'll be choosing the major axis again the minor axis again but now you notice how much ever you move the mouse only that much ellipse will be popped so if you try to make it full it won't it won't happen so if you want like this much around click okay there and then it will be done if you want to access the parameters major axis minor axis click on the ellipse again now for how much angle it has been done it has been showing you 246 degrees that is how much angle that has been covered with this ellipse you can always change that the major axis as well the minor axis these are all parameters that you can always change none of them are fixed okay so that is about ellipse next up we have slots slot you might have you might know what a slot is first First, you create a center line in a slot. You that that it does automatically the next procedure as well. You choose the length of the center line. Uh, I'm gonna choose it to be a hundred. Click OK. Then you notice that you create a constant contour around that center line. Okay. So the length parameter is now being shown. If you click 50 mm and hit OK, that slot will be created. This slot option should still be open for you. Parameters you can always change them whenever you want. Okay. And click OK. This slot has been done. What is the next type of slot we have? We have center point straight slot. Now here in this slot, we chose this first point first and then this point. Now here we'll be choosing the center point first, then the end point again, then you'll be creating a slot. Okay. Similar to the first slot, you can always edit the parameters later. Third type of slot is three point arc slot. We just discussed what a three point arc is. Similar to that, you create a three point arc first, but this will be a center line automatically. And now we create a contour, constant contour around that center line, and you will be done with that three point slot. Last up, we have center point arc slot. First, you'll be choosing the center of the arc. Sorry, I'll move somewhere. Else. And then you'll choose the sweep of the arc. And then you'll create a constant uh, slot over the center line. Okay, these are some four types of slots that we have. Okay. This will save your time instead of creating one line, create an arc, create another line and create an arc. You can just choose this slot option whenever you need and this will be useful. Okay. I'm going to select all this and click delete. Okay. So lastly, in sketch entities, we have something called polygon. Polygon, you know, we all know what polygons are. Something, some, any close figure with more than or equal to three such is a polygon. Even a triangle, squares are all polygons, right? You can choose the number of sides over here. So five, six, seven, three, four, any any value of more than or equal to three, you can choose over here. If I click six, there's an option, two options called inscribe circle and circumscribe circle. What is the difference? I'm going to choose this origin as center point. And I'm going to create this hexagon. Now, the inscribe circle, as the name says, will create a circle inside the hexagon. Now, if you choose for the same thing, if I click it over here, you notice the difference, circumscribe, it went out. Right, that was the difference. Okay, but with this selected, you can also change the number of sides here. Now, if you click seven, with that circumscribe circle diameter be constant, and the number of sides keeps on increasing. That is the value. Where is the diameter? You can notice that this is the circle diameter option that is being shown. You can change this value as well if you hit 200 and it okay, it got a little bigger. So this is how we access polygons. Not just a hexagon, not just a pentagon, any value uh, more than or equal to three, and you can start creating polygon. This will save a lot of time instead of again creating seven sides and then adding constraints to them. Now you might notice that it's not properly aligned. You just click on one side, click on one side carefully, and give horizontal. You want this to be horizontal, make this horizontal. You now know it is properly aligned to you, and click OK. Now, now all those other relations will be created automatically. So this is about a polygon now before i go on to creating features there is something called a fillet that we can give fillet is you know you notice that in daily life you don't notice a lot of sharp corners in objects that you use now how do you create that in sketches you are uh, on select clear selection form. okay how do you create that you choose a corner here uh okay i'll give a bigger value to so that you can notice okay you notice that a rounded edge was created now this is a rounded edge but if you have to tell it properly it's a tangent arc that has been created over there okay now you can click on any corner or if you want you can click on one side and then the next side which you want which comprises of that corner now you notice that these two corners are selected 
Now, notice that there's an option called dimension each fillet on the left hand side. Okay. So I've checked that as of now and I'm going to click OK. What happens now? Dimension each fillet did is it gave 20 mm radius to this as well as this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck this. I'm going to choose this corner and this now and I'm going to click OK. You notice that again, only one, one of them was given a 20 mm radius option. Now, what is the difference is if you double, if you click, I'm going to click OK here. If you double click on this and then if you change it to say 30, click OK. You notice that only this got changed. This this is, oh, sorry, sorry. Both of these got changed. OK. You notice that the difference, both of them get changed. But similarly, but even these two you created at the same time. But if you change this to 30 now, only this gets changed. This is still at 20. Now, how do I check this was 30 or not? You just click here and see, notice that it was still 30. Now, why is it saying driven? It is an extra because there is an equal constraint that has been given that these two arcs that have been created, you notice they are in pink color now. So they are equal. Uh, if you change this, the other one gets changed automatically. Now you might tell this is not a big deal. If you change one, if you need changes, if you don't need changes, you can change it over there back again. But if you have created a number of fillets at the same time, and if you forget to uncheck this dimension each fillet, then you have to, you know, it will give equal constraint to all of them. You have to select individual and then you have to delete and then you'll have to go forward and change the fillet. Instead of that, you can just dimension each fillet. So whenever you want individually, independently, you can change each fillet. So that is the use of the sketch fillet option. Okay. So next up, we'll go to creating 3D models now that you've created sketches. But before that, there's one thing called fully defining a sketch. I have created a very simple sketch for that. Okay. I named it fully define as well. Okay. So let it open. Okay, so this is, I've used some like three to four, five lines, and then I've created one arc, and then I've created the sketch. Okay, this is a basic sketch that I've created. Now you might notice in the top bottom right corner, sorry, bottom right corner, it shows that the sketch is underdefined. Now what is what is defining a sketch is, you give each entity in the sketch, it may be a line, it may be a circle, it may be an arc, you give its dimensions, not just its dimension, also its position. So if you share this with anyone else, he must also be able to cre create this in his or her laptops or personal computers. Okay. So that is the use of defining a sketch. Now, if you use smart dimension, now I'm going to check on this line. There's a 50 mm dimension. I'm going to hit enter. I'll show you the dimension of this. It's 90 mm. I'll let enter the dimension of this line, which is 52.5. I'll hit OK. I'll hit this line, 45 mm. I'll click OK. I'll choose this arc, the radius of this arc as well. You notice that it's 25. I'll hit OK. Now, you still not that notice that there is underdefined that is being shown. Now, you might all easily tell me that, yeah, you have missed on that one line that you have there. Now, in this small sketch, you might notice this, notice it very easily. But if you have created something larger sketch, or if you have created a complex sketch, you feel like you have defined everything, and still it doesn't show fully defined. Now, why should you always fully define it? Fully defining is a very good practice in CAD as well as in SOLIDWORKS. You should completely define the sketch. So, so if you you know share the model or share the sketch, you or she should also be able to recreate it as I told earlier. Now, if uh, in this simple sketch, you can tell use smart dimension, click on this line, show the dimension, it will be fully defined. But if you have a larger number of entities, how do you know then? How do you search for it? There's an option called in the display delayed relations here. You can click on fully defined sketch option. You click on that. You, there's an option called all entities in sketch. You click calculate. And you notice that the lines distance from the origin was shown as for, for 54.11. And you notice that fully defined has also been shown. Now, this is how you fully define a sketch that you have created. If you, if you know where is it missing, you don't find it, where is it missing, you can always use this and fully define your sketch. Okay. So this is about defining a sketch. I'll minimize this now. Minimize this as well. So again, I'll start a new part. Okay. So now we'll be creating 3D models. Now that you've created sketches, how do you convert it into a solid body or a 3D model? Right. So I'm going to choose the top plane this time. I'm going to click right click, click sketch. And you notice that we are normal to the sketch. Now let me create a simple circle. Okay. So I'm going to create a diameter of around, uh, say, 100 m. Okay. Click enter. And you notice that a circle was created. Now that you have the sketch ready, 
There's an option called features beside the sketch. You use that. There's an option called extruded boss or base. You click that. You notice that it automatically chooses the sketch and a solid model has been created. Right now it is still showing the preview of what is to come yet. You have this arrow mark. If you place it over there and pull it up and leave it, you notice that a solid model is created. If I click OK, now we have created a solid cylinder out of a circle that we just created. You notice this extrude tool, what it did is from the profile that you had, it created another 3D model normally to the sketch profile that we have. Normal, the word normal is important, okay? But there are other features which don't do it normally. We'll learn that in upcoming sessions as well, okay? So now that I've done it, is there any option to edit it? Now I created some random value I don't even remember now. How do I do it? You right click on the extrude option and there's an option called edit feature. You click on edit feature. Notice that all the options that were active before will come back again. So there are a number of features that we have. I'll, I'll explain you that now. There's an option called sketch plane. What is the sketch plane now? That was the top plane or where, wherever plane that you have sketched, that is the plane. And from there, this much MM was created, extrusion was created. You can also choose the other options called surface, face or plane or vertex. Now this will be useful if you already have a number of models already created. You want it from one side to the other. Then how do you do it? Instead of choosing distances and measuring it every time, you can choose such options and then you do it. But for now, I'm going to teach you what is an offset. If you choose offset and you give an offset of say 30 m, hit enter. You notice that from the sketch plane, there was a distance of 30 mm that was created, and from there, the extrusion was created. Now this is this is the work of offset. There is an option called reverse direction. If you click that. The offset will be given below the sketch, and from there the extrusion was created. Okay, that is at what offset. So I'll come back to sketch plane. Notice that there's a reverse direction here as well. If you click on that, it goes to the bottom. Simple as that. Okay, you click back again, it will come back to top. Now there are several options here again. In you have started from sketch plane. Now there are again options here. Again, up to vertex, up to surface, offset from surface, up to body. All these options when you have several other models. If you choose those surface up to that surface, it's going to create an extrusion. This is how these all options work. But I'm going to show you what a mid plane option is. Mid plane, if you choose, and if you write 100 mm as distance, what the software does is it's going to create 50 mm at the top, 50 mm at the bottom, using this as the symmetric plane in between. That is mid plane, as the name says. If you keep it in just blind, this is a, it creates an extrusion at the top. Now, if you keep it at blind, you notice there's another option called direction two. But if you do it at mid plane, you don't see another option. I'll keep it at blind. You click on direction two, and how much hour you need here? Say you want our 20 mm now in, in the below of the sketch. You hit 20. Now you can see 100 mm from the top and 20 in the below. So in both directions, you have created extrusions. You can also, again, as I told, use arrow marks to change it manually. You know, enter value. You can also enter values and do that accordingly. And if I don't want it, you can always uncheck it. You can always try it over here. There's an option called draft over here. Now, if you're a mechanical engineering student from third semester onwards, you'll be knowing what a draft is. Now, draft is, if you don't know, I'm going to tell you. When you create mechanical molds, you know, say objects, you say, you melt metal and then you pour it into a mold to give it a particular shape. You know, you actually don't make it. If you want to create this exact cylinder, they don't actually make it exactly straight, the mold. They're going to give certain angles so that when they remove it, it's going to be easy. It's not a complex thing. You don't have to know it always. But if you want to know it, just say draft in manufacturing and you'll know it. You can Google that up later. If you click on draft, you notice that one degree draft, it gets inward. It goes inward, both the sides, all throughout the cylinder. Now, if you click on draft outward, it's going to, it's going to go the other way around. We can increase that value. We can decrease that value, however you want. Okay. Or you can also enter manually if you were eight degrees. Enter. You notice that change. I'm going to uncheck this for now. I'm going to click OK. So we have a simple cylinder in our hand, a solid cylinder that we have in our hand. OK. So there's another option called extruded cut. What we did in extrusion is we had a sketch. We added mod materials to the model, and we created a solid model. Now to remove material from the model. For that, I'm going to choose this top plane. You know how to sketch on a top plane, top of the cylinder. Right click on it, sketch on it. Doesn't go normally. How do you change it? View orientation. You go normally to it, and now we are normal to the plate. So there's, I'll create another small circle for you. Okay. So this time, say around 50. Click OK. Click OK here. In the feature section again, go back. 
extrude revolve no extruded cut here we have this option over here now if you use the scroll button you notice that there is another circle depending upon the distance that we had uh, you can always increase it manually again if you hit under it it comes back all the way to the bottom surface throughout the if you click okay it's notice that there's a hole that has been created throughout the cylinder that we originally created how do you change this similar similar what we did you right click on this use edit feature option you can always come and access it what i told you about extrude sketch sketch plane offset same thing same stuff everything works exactly the same okay blind now the, there are a couple of options uh, added here in cuts there's option called through all what is a through all this is a solid cylinder that we have created if you choose through all it's going to cut throughout the entire cylinder and then create a hole if you choose through all both what's going to happen is if you had material on the other side as well it was going to create a material there itself and cut over there also now again up to next up to vertex up to surface offset these are all some comp stuff if you had other models already done you know these will be useful mid plane again if you had something on the other side of the sketch plane that you have created it would have cut from that side as well for now i'm going to close blind for 100 mm if you want to yeah so and if you click draft there's another draft option as well if you increase this value you notice that the circle here the yellow circle is get shorter and shorter which notice that there's a tapering angle that has been given now i'm going to uncheck this we don't want to draft as of now if you click okay you notice that a cut has been done accordingly okay so this is about now this is about a revolve extrude and extruded cut now similarly we have another option called revolve for that i'll be creating a new part now first okay and uh, this time we'll be creating the same cylinder that we created in extrude i'll notice a few changes that i do right now i'm going to choose the front plane now instead of the top plane i'm going to sketch okay i'm going to choose corner rectangle okay i'm going to click origin and the length i want it to be 100 this i want it to be 25 okay now we have a rectangle in place you click okay click on features click on revolve now now what extrusion done is it created a model normally it had a linear path of adding model now what this does is is going to create a mo model revolving around the axis that you have to choose now so it, you have to it will be prompted to choose an axis of revolution choose this side notice that a similar cylinder has been created but it revolved around that axis and then this model was created right if you click okay and notice that uh, a, a solid cylinder has been created again if you want to edit right click on it and click on edit features okay same options that we had in extrude a little bit different over here uh, we don't have an offset option over here we have an offset from surface if you had another surface or model already created you would have known that mid plane option 360 degrees is the amount of angle that you want if you change it to 180 degrees notice that this has a symmetrical uh, face a uh, solid body was created now again if you create it as blind you can add another direction now direction to choose another degrees of say 50 degrees notice that a uh, pi type of solid is created from the top okay uh, if you click okay so this is how it is done for now i'm going to go right click it edit it i'm going to uncheck the second direction and i'm going to use this as 360 degrees and hit enter you notice that a uh, complete solid has been created again now if you want to create an extruded cut how do you do it you choose the front plane i'm going to right click sketch on it now it didn't go to normal view change it to normal view okay choose a rectangle again uh, we will not worry much about dimensions for now we will create a small rectangle now you notice that extra uh, revolve requires an axis of revolution in this case where we created the uh, rectangle we already had one line that was in collinear with the origin as the axis of revolution but here what you need is will create a center line okay from the origin wherever you want but in collinear with the origin i'm going to click okay and now if you go to features extrude revolved cut okay revolved cut you notice that a cut has been created with this line as the axis of revolution just been automatically chosen now the a cut will be formed same options that we had in extrusion mid plane mid plane option blind option angle if you want you can always change it direction 2 if you change this angle to 180 stay and if you use another direction for it 
choose another 50 degrees for it. Now notice that in another direction was 50 degrees and the other direction is 100, 180. I'm going to uncheck this. I'm going to create a 360 degree blind cut. I click OK. Click OK again. Notice that an extruded cut has been formed. Notice the cut. So this is how you use revolved and revolved cut. Now, before I end the session, I'll have to, I'll add a couple of points for you, a couple of tips you can take it as. Now, before you become an, become an advanced machine designer, you know, we are still in, you know, budding stages. What some practices you have to you know, follow is, you know, don't forget to dimension, you know, sketches that you've created. I personally had, have had mis made mistakes, you know. Uh, you know, at the end, you have to recreate the whole model, okay? You have to keep in your mind that modeling is not the end stage. This will go for further manufacturing, right? So you'll have to keep in mind that you should dimension everything that you create, add proper sketch relations if and when necessary before you send it to the further man. For now, you, that will be the proper manufacturing uh, designing practices that you should follow, okay? Second thing is, if you have the latest version of SOLIDWORKS, if you get access to it, if you forget, you know, how do I know what type of rectangle does what, you, you, if you forget what it does, just place a cursor over there. You, you can notice a small GIF video that SOLIDWORKS creates for you, giving a small tutorial of how, you know, it works, how this works. You, if I place it on the three-point arc, it shows how the three-point arc works. Now, these are some of the tips you can use for initial sketching and modeling, okay? So before I let you ask any questions that you have, so I'm going to tell you what to, uh, some stuff, okay? So we have, uh, uh, you'll be sent a feedback form to your email IDs now, okay, at the, up to the end of the session. We request you to uh, fill that feedback form. So if you have any mistakes, there are any improvements and suggestions, we can actually implement them and give better you know, session next time onwards, okay? And there's also something called a design challenge that we are thinking of conducting in the near future. Okay, so keep us, you know, connected, keep, be connected with us on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook, you know, you know, with the upcoming design challenges. There'll be, for winners, there'll be cash prizes and pro, uh, other prizes that we have thought of doing. So keep connected with us for other for upcoming sessions and design challenges as well. And also don't forget to, you know, fill the feedback form. Hello, sir. This is uh, Sajid Suhail. The question is, uh, can we do analysis uh, in the SOLIDWORKS? Yeah, sure. We can also create analysis in SOLIDWORKS. After you've created a model, you have specified the material to the model. The, those are some of the advanced stages in SOLIDWORKS. Yes, you can create uh, analysis in SOLIDWORKS as well. So another question is, how can we download uh, the SOLIDWORKS? Is it free or... Uh, oh, how, okay. Uh, have... okay. Uh, SOLIDWORKS is not a free software. Okay, since we're an educational you know, startup, we have access to it right now, but there are uh, uh, other ways you can get the, you know, torrents, there are other ways you can get the crack version of the software, you can always access it. If you need it, we'll definitely send it to you, the, the torrent link. Uh, so how can we learn uh, the solid work furthermore? Furthermore, there are various YouTube tutorials. Okay, uh, then the SOLIDWORKS website as well, where you can, you know, create an account and learn for yourself. There are other YouTube tutorials as well. And you can also keep up with us. We'll come up with other sessions, you know, add up to this. We'll give you free sessions as well. Uh, this can be interactive as well. We're planning on to do certain stuff. Uh, there are YouTube tutorials as well. And if you want, you can also follow for the upcoming sessions that we are planning to do. Okay, what format the model needs to be saved? Okay, so by default, what SOLIDWORKS does is there's a SLDPRT, solid part if you tell it in short. SLDPRT format that SOLIDWORKS saves it in. Okay, that that yeah, that will do automatically. You need not choose the format. Okay, you cannot access this format in many other softwares, but you can. There are also other options in which you can save. If say if you have created a drawing of the model that you've created, you can create a PDF of it. Now that will also be in a solid drawing format. Now we can create a PDF and share it with others as well. The format is fixed. That is a solid part, uh, format that will be created. If you want. Further analysis is the format fine. Yeah, if you have created the model on SOLIDWORKS, then there is no problem at all in doing the analysis. That format will be fine. You can just open up that model in SOLIDWORKS and then start analysis as well. That will not be a problem. Excuse me. Yeah. Okay. But uh, I'm asking one question. You okay. Creating the model, I want to that the bomb. I I want to creating one model complete. Then it's how how can create the with the help of this model to bomb converting the bomb. You have any idea about that? What do you want to create? A model of what? 
bomb bill of material okay bill of material chapter okay, uh, okay. yeah it is so, possible in this model yeah you can create a bill of materials in the drawing yeah if you choose if you have already specified a material you can just choose mm -hmm. bill of materials and you can create it that's not a big deal in solidworks you can create it we have not just covered in this session because since it was a basic session we have not included that in this session yeah okay weight calculation everything is in uh, it will coming uh, automatically no yeah yeah Every, everything will come up automatically you don't have to do it. if you have specified the part name and the material already it will not be a problem if you just use bill of material you can create it. so you wanted to learn about assembly so this is one part that i have already created now the uh, dimension was around 50 mm in diameter okay so if i save this save as a task now you can notice the part here as prt solid part now these are the various other formats that you can save in for the previous person who asked this down now these are the various formats you can save them in now there's the uh, three of manufacturing format you know catia format as well you can save it as a simple image there's a creo format as well step files as well okay now i'm going to save it as a solid part i'm going to just save it as some model one so if i minimize this create a new part okay what's that i'll go it quickly with this i'm going to create another circle of uh, say 55 mm then another circle for 60 mm okay click okay so now i'm going to use extrude okay say for some 25 mm i'm going to click okay now notice that we have created like a ring type structure right yeah so now i'm going to save this as well some model 2 now after you have created all the models that are necessary for your assembly what you can do is you can uh, create new when you have done you can choose assembly over here first and then when you open this up uh, you'll be asked to insert all the parts that you need okay in the assembly tool section uh, i'll choose more, you know the parts to assembly or insert it'll show over here now if you choose one it'll have to place one first and the second if you want another component there's an option called insert components and then model 2 that i've created now that was also automatically inserted now whatever constraints you want to add you want to insert this inside this or you want to do anything else you can all do under this section there are something called mates and insert you can add the component you can create mates you know as the video shows over there you can add them all but for now we are I'm not going to teach you all that but there is an option to do all that so i just showed you how to start an assembly now depending upon your necessity if you, you know just use this as mate option and these two i'm going to just show you small uh, you know i'm going to choose this side and this side and i'm going to give the coincident relation click okay you notice that these two will be coincident okay so this is one mate that we applied so you can apply several other mates you can con you can add constraints as well so this is the uh, way how assembly works. Okay. So. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Uh, is uh, you creating the part and assembling the part? Uh, first, are you assembling the some parts? Then, if uh, you joining the some mates, okay. Okay. Uh, then. That is a totally depend on the start is uh, starting on the sketch or uh, you assembling the any type or. Could you repeat your question? What was your question? <laughs> for uh, for example, you can start uh, yeah, sketching the one part. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, after uh, you taking the any plane, front or right. uh, side okay. view and any plane. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If after you creating the some after you taking the assembly, then yeah. you inserting a part same whatever they you creating the part. Yeah. Initially, that what I happens to... is I got a question. Ah. Initially, what happens yeah. is mm -hmm. when you insert the component, it will come as mm -hmm. the uh, how you save how you started it. If you started in the front plane, it's gonna come as front plane. Now we can always rotate it if you want it. If you had it like this, if you had a mouse like this, and then you want it to be like this. You can always do that. You can always rotate and then start applying mates for it. That will not be a problem. Yeah.
thank you everyone thank you for the session i hope you learned it uh, please don't forget to fill in the feedback uh, feedback form okay thank you